teach somebody a bender lick and they can bend for a day. Teach them how to come up with their own bee bender licks they've been for a lifetime, said no one. Well, except me, today here in the Bender Bunker, your one-stop shop for bee bender related videos. And this lesson is designed to see if we can deliver the bold promise the title of this video makes, break you out of the bender box and give you more options and more fluidity with your bee bender leads up and down the neck, similar to what you just saw and heard in the opening and what you've hopefully been enjoying here on the channel for the last three and a half years. And what I've been doing uh, lately is kind of watching what I do when I come up with these licks and I've identified five key bender neck and bender positions that I'm now going to share with you that hopefully if I do it correctly will empower you to come up with all the bee bender leads you'll ever need on your own to the point where you, you probably won't even need the bender bunker any longer. Wait, why are we doing this? This is a horrible idea. I am out of this. So if you're as curious as I am to see if this lesson can deliver its ultimate promise of enabling you to come up with all the bee bender licks you'll need by showing you these five positions, there's only one way to find out. Grab that bender and keep watching because that's what's coming up next here on the bender bunker. All right, you're still with me. Nice to see you on board for breaking out of the bender box here at the bender bunker. Got a little bit more talking to do. If you'd like to skip this part and go straight to where I show you the five positions to break out of the box, just go to the top comment there in the comment section below. It'll be from me. You'll see a timestamp in the comment. Click on that. You'll jump right to where I start showing you the physical positions on the neck. No problem. Go ahead and do that. I'll see you there in the future. But the reason I'm talking a little bit more is I want to make sure you, the home viewer, and I are on the same page of what the heck we're breaking out of. It's fun to break out of stuff. I get it. But what is the bender box? Well, to put simply, the bender box is an updated term to what I started this channel with back in December 2017, but the very first full lesson I ever really put out, unlocking the twang box. So I just called it the twang box back then. I had a catchy little title. And I've now updated that to the bender box because I think that bender box is a more of a specific term to be bender guitar. Yeah, it's a little bit less dirty. So we're going with bender box now, but it's really the twang box of what I talked about when I started in 2017. Now that video, Unlocking the Twang Box, is just still the most watched video on the channel. I could put out Clarence White meets Marty Stewart and they play all these licks together and I could do that lesson and it'll get a lot of views. But for some reason, that Unlocking the Twang Box would still do two to three times more views. It still does three and a half years later. And when I think about why is that the case, I think it's just because so many of the viewers here on the channel are newer to their journey. They're just starting out and that's a very helpful video to brand new players. I had only been playing about a, just a tad over a year when I made that video and I was just sharing the bender box, twang box position that I was finding so useful with my new bender guitar to come up with quick and easy twang licks. So let's just make sure we understand what I'm talking about. This lesson today will be an E, so the bender box for E would be the top two strings on the seventh and the next two on the ninth. So the bender box is all kinds of fun and that's why I enjoyed making that lesson way back in the day and why I think the video resonates. You can just take that bender box, there's all variations within those small amount of notes, there's a lot of variations. You follow along with the key changes and you can be bending the guitar in no time. So I get why it resonates with viewers. Now unfortunately, as I found when I first started playing guitar, blues rock in my early teens, <laughs> It's all fun, but boy, you sure get locked in that pentatonic box pretty quick, and then you spend the rest of your time trying to break out of that and increase your vocabulary on the neck. Well, this is no different. The uh, bender box, twang box back then, is so useful to come up with quick and easy twang licks, and so much of what your heroes, uh, your Clarence, your Martys, all those are working frequently out of the bender box, as we all do. But much like the pentatonic, you're going to want to break out of it, and that's what we're doing today with the five positions. So that's what I wanted to cover, just make sure you understood what we were talking about with the Bender Box. Now, if you're new to the Bender, this is maybe one of the first videos you've ever seen on this channel. The Bender Box just looked new to you when I just showed it to you again there. This might not be the right video to start with. I would recommend maybe starting with Unlocking the Twain Box, the first video I shot with that position. I'll put a direct link. If you just put your mouse over this video, you'll see a link pop up in the corner. And just hop over there, watch that one, and then maybe come back to this one. This one's going to make a lot more sense once you've actually mastered that pattern. Because it is a powerful pattern and, and a great one to start with. So maybe start there come back to this. Because I do consider this one to be kind of a companion sister piece to the original there. At least that's what I'm intending. All right, let's get rolling with the five positions that help us break out of the bender box today. Again, this will be in E, as I was in the intro section. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you the five positions, uh, one at a time, one through five. We are going to start down here in the open E chord. We're going to work our way up to an octave E. 
So the five positions I'm showing you will fall in between here at the open E and between by the time we get up here at the octave E, all five are right here. To make this easy, I kind of call this my bass package. I'm only going to work on the top three strings on purpose for this lesson to make things go quickly and easily because you can do so much with these five positions and top three strings. So you've got your, your B string, the bender string itself, followed by the strings on either side of it, and that's enough for us to work with today. Again, the bass package, if this was a car, we'd have power windows, power locks, cruise control. We can drive up and down the neck very comfortably. Uh, if we brought in the fourth string, your D string, that's more the luxury package with your heated leather seats, your satellite radio. Uh, we might get to that on another lesson because every time you add another string in, you're just mathematically adding on to what you can do with these positions. But for now, we're going to concentrate on the top three strings and five positions. So keep that in mind. All right, being an E, we're going to start this off with position one. Let's go ahead and think about an open E chord. Since it's only the top three strings, let's go ahead and remove everything but our index finger. So that's third string, first fret for the end of that top end of that E chord. So we're going to hit that and the two open strings next to it for our first position one. All right, that's position one. Position two is the seventh shape for E right here. So let's, if you made like a D seventh and just took it up two, you're an E. That is a super twangy, powerful bender shape. That is position two. All right, okay. Now we're going to come out of the seventh mentality and go to the major mentality, which is going to be the D chord itself shape, but right here. So take a regular D chord, you know what you love it, up to your knee now, right? And that's a very twangy shape as well. That is position number three. Position four is going to be, the, as I mentioned before, the bender box itself is included in this, and it's position four. So for E, this is going to be top two on the seventh, and since we're only doing three strings, that's going to be your third string on the ninth. And then the fifth and final position, as we work our way up to get back here to the high octave and do the whole trip, would be basically it's a slight variation on the theme. I almost made this part of the bender box, but I kind of think of the bender box for E in the situation being what I showed you, the seventh and the ninth and everything between the seventh and the ninth. This falls slightly out of it, so it's the top two strings on the tenth. So it's the top two on the tenth, and then sometimes you're gonna take that B string on the tenth and your high E on the twelfth. So really, position five will be the top two on the tenth, and also the B string tenth and the high E twelfth. Those comprise position five. So here we go. Position one, open E with uh, just your G string on the first fret, right? We go to the seventh position for position two. A D shaped major chord for E is position three. Top three strings of the bender box is position four. Position five will be the top two on the 10th. And then also sometimes the 10, 12. And then we would be right here, back to where we started an octave up for E. Those are your five. Now what do we do with them? Well, that's it. I mean, it's the 80-20 rule, I'll be honest with you. If you go back and watch the 50 plus bender licks that I have put out on this channel since we started in 2017, and you really get comfortable with these five positions, you're going to realize that so much of what I'm doing is emanating and stemming from those five positions or variations therein. And of course, the nice thing about this is when you get comfortable with the five positions, they change with all the keys. They just naturally follow you. It's just math and fretboard structure. So we're just doing it in E because it's, it's very easy to illustrate in E, but if I was in G, well then instead of the open, I would kind of think of the bar chord of G. So the top two would be one. I'd hop up here for the position two. I'd go position three. I'd be up here for the top of the bender box for G. And then the position five. Back to four. So it follows you around. So just for now, go ahead and trust me on this one. Commit to memory the five positions that I showed you. Of course, the bender box being number four, so you probably already have that one. Commit the other four on top of that for the full five. Get comfortable with them. And then when I come back, I'm going to talk to you about mentally how to start working with these shapes and how to start thinking about using them to indeed 
not just physically use the shapes to bust out of the box. Obviously, when we're down here, we're not up in the bender box, so we have, in essence, busted out of it. But I'm gonna talk next about how more mentally to use these shapes to come up with your own licks and bust out of it that way mentally, because that's really more important than just the physical shapes themselves. Coming up next. All right, let's talk more about how to functionally use the five shapes that I hope you're gonna take the time and commit to muscle memory, make it subconscious, they're just there for you all the time like they're there for me now. Because once I got them so they were second nature to me, boy, it really opened up the fretboard and all the licks I could come up with. And I think it will do the same for you. I thought a good way to illustrate uh, these positions in more real world circumstances, let's go ahead and just work up the neck in the way I did in the opening. And if you go back and listen to the opening of this video, I just found a good backing track that I wanted to play over. As I do so often, that's how I kind of come up with these licks and these lessons. I find a backing track that inspires me. And then my playing will be determined by what I want to do over that particular backing track. Well, this is kind of a straight up train beat kind of traditional country thing. So I knew I was going to be extra twangy on this. And I knew I wanted to start here and get up to here so I could show you that. Everything in between was just kind of freeform as I played along with the track. I just wanted to make sure no matter what I played was going to be using the position so I could illustrate. So basically that was this. <laughs> what I played to the opening track. So let's go over that real quick and I'll show you my mentality, what I was thinking using the five positions we just covered. So I'm starting in position one, I'm jumping up to position two and coming back to one. So, right, then I'm going to position two. So it's one, two, back to one. Again, I'm not trying to show you the individual licks. I'm going to go kind of quick. This is to show you the positions, what you can do with them. So my mentality on that is this. The next part was. So what I'm doing there is I'm top two on the seventh. So now I'm considering that position four for E, right? So we're in the top of position four, the bender box itself. But I did that to feed me purposely back into position three, the D-shaped e, e major. Then I went perfectly from there. This is a great way to get into the bender box. This is the way like guys like Marty Stewart do it all the time. So now I'm in position four from three. And I'm gonna finish with five, get that fifth position in there and end up back on four. So that's that 10, 12, position five. I just hopped up here to the full octave of one to illustrate the point. Now, what I also did in the opening was to make sure that I reconfirmed that this is always a two-way street. What goes up goes back down. So what I did is I started up position two, the seventh. I took it a full octave up and then worked my way back down the neck. And then I did that down to position one, but just an octave up. I did five into four. Did four into three. And then I did uh, two into one. So I went up then came back down using all five positions just to illustrate that point. Uh, let's break down another lick. This was a lick I was thinking about doing for our quick lick series. I don't think I will, but I think it can illustrate what we're doing here. It was a closing lick. I thought it'd be fun to close a solo or a song with. It was this. It's got that B bender balance. It's got a rhythm to it. Let's pick that apart real quick. I'm not going to show you the lick. You can pick it up, but I'll show you what I'm doing here as it relates to the five positions. So again, we're in E. So I'm doing is this. I'm anchoring my index finger on the high E seventh. So I'm anchoring it on the top string of position four. I'm starting with the B string tenth. So I'm starting in a position five and position four together. And I'm working my way down, anchoring with that note on the high E seventh. So that's the fifth position, and then I go to this note, which is now anything, again, as I said before, anything between the seventh and ninth fret, I'm considering position four for the key of E. Now they're both on the seventh. Now I'm poaching into position three down here, the D-shaped E major, right? So we did position five into four, four, four into three. 
I've done this look a million times. So that's the top end of the bender box here, position 40. Ending up down here in position 3, though. And then all I did was position 2, pre-bent. Same trick for position 1, pre-bent. where your personality your playing style the way you attack notes comes into play that's just a riff that i had long before i ever started thinking about these five positions i thought it'd be great to illustrate the five positions a completely interesting side riff i had nothing to do with this lesson i just broke it down for you and it uses all five positions because again that's most of the way i'm doing these licks and i want you to try it as well because i think it'll really work out well for you let's just uh, talk about something i rarely talk about in this channel that i think will be helpful i'd like to bring in uh our old friend, math. That's right, I said math. I just want to kind of make you realize the statistical possibilities available to you now, just using the top three strings like we've been doing on purpose, and then five positions. So you've got, you know, those, there's position one and three strings. Okay, well just mathematically, I can start that riff in position one on, I could pick any of the three strings first, right? I could pick two strings together, I could down pick all three, I could have the bender pre-bent and then I could go up with the bender. Just three strings in one position, the mathematical possibilities of what you can do with that are huge. You know, I can't do the numbers in my head, maybe you can, but it's a lot. So think about that and now think, okay, I've got three strings in five different positions. The math goes through the roof. It's more than enough to be dangerous and come up with tons and tons of bender licks. So think of it that way. You're really kind of only limited by your own imagination. So again, when you make these five positions second nature, so they're always available to you mentally, you look down the fretboard, you always kind of just see them. And again, as I illustrated earlier with that G, they, when I switch keys, that's no problem. Those positions are just following me on the, in the fretboard anywhere I go. And if you get it to that point, these licks will come second nature for you as well. Well, all right, I'm about talked and bent out on this one. I've given you plenty to work on with the five positions. Again, I encourage you to take your time, commit them to memory, muscle memory, make them second nature, because I believe in the long run, they will indeed pay twang dividends for you. I, I don't know if those dividends are quarterly or monthly, but dividends nonetheless. And here's something I want to leave you with in terms of breaking out of the bender box, which is the whole point of this video. It's the barometer that I used in my personal playing, probably somewhere around the first to second year of my bender journey, that I used to decide I feel like I may have broken out of the bender box once and for all, and it was this. You know, when I when I would start my bender solos or work on my bender clips, I tended to think of, okay, what key am I in and where's the bender box for that key? When I stopped thinking of it as the bender box and just started thinking of it in the context of what I just showed you, started thinking of it as only as position four, it stopped having any more or less importance than the other four positions for the total of five we've been working on. It was just position four. And as such, then, it didn't really matter to me any longer where I started a, or ended a passage or thought about playing. I could start equally in any of these five positions, depending on what my mood was or what I thought the song called for. The bender box no longer had any greater importance than the other positions. And that's when I felt like I had truly come out of the bender box mentality and had got the fretboard opened up a lot more to me and I was able to create a lot more licks for the channel. And again, I think the five positions will do that with you as well. So if I, you know, if I'm playing over a piece of music and I want to just come out with maximum twang, I might be down here in position two. Get some of that seventh mentality. If I'm just vamping an E chord already and I'm feeling kind of lazy, I'll just stay in position one for a second. That's just me coming out of doing a quick lick in position one. And to buy more time, all I did is, hey, I'll repeat that an octave higher. So this is position one, an octave higher. Then I went to position five right there, the 10, 12, took it up, and decided to switch my fingers. So still 10, 12, I just switched the strings to come down with it. And then I went to the top end of position four. Don't call it the bender box anymore. And then I toggle between position four on the seventh and position five on the tenth. Again, I'm flying around the five positions, starting one, starting two, doesn't matter to me again, they're all equal. And that's a great barometer of when you are coming out of the bender box mentality, which again, is the point of this lesson. 
And here's something to think about. You could try maybe head over to our main YouTube channel page, The Bender Bunker itself, where we have our playlist. Now, there's one playlist called Be Bender Lessons, appropriately. That's where it's got the 50 plus Bender Licks that I've published all these last few years. Maybe go into the, that playlist, start watching some of those, and see if you can't quickly identify the five positions I'm using to create those licks. Because again, so much of what I've done in the past is with this base package, and if you, any of those ever gave you trouble in the past, I think if you go and look at them again with new eyes using these five positions, you're gonna be able to break them down and learn a lot quicker. And then also while you're there on the channel page, look at the other playlist, Favorite Bee Bender Videos, because that is just stocked full of Marty Stewart Bender videos on purpose. It's a regular Marty party, if you will. And just look at what Marty's doing in those clips when he goes into his bender leads and see if you can't start picking out the five positions as well in Marty's playing, because it, believe me, it's a lot of commonality in all bender players related to the five positions. All right, that's about all I've got for you today. If you got anything out of this lesson, we could use the support here on the channel. So if you could give us a quick thumbs up, I would appreciate that with your mouse right down there. Oh, thank you. The big red arrow is now, don't be scared, the big red arrow is appearing to show you where the subscription button is. If you're a new viewer, you're not yet subscribed to the bunker, I'd love to have you in the family. So quick and easy button there to subscribe to the channel. And then what other YouTube channels called Virtual Tip Jar, we call Virtual Beer Donation. And you can do that if you feel like buying the bunker a round of beers, you can do that through our PayPal account. Bender Bunker has its very own, safe and secure. Just go to the show more section and expand that out. That's where we list all the equipment we use in these videos and you will see the Bender Bunker's PayPal account there if you'd like to send over a virtual round of beers. We always appreciate it. And then you'll also see our Instagram channel if you'd like to see pictures of me drinking said beer, usually with my dog. Or maybe you just want some more guitar content. I do have some clips over there that are not necessarily Bender related, but a lot of guitar playing on the Instagram channel. It's there for you as well. That's it. I'm about done. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I appreciate your time today. I hope these five positions prove to be useful in breaking you out of the Bender box as promised. I'm going to have to leave you, as I always do, with our motto. It is never too late to go on a bender. Certainly hope you do, and I'll see you next time real soon. Until then, keep it bent.